Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Lyndon and today I want to share with you one of my favourite songs of all time to play on alto saxophone. It is of course Dave Brubeck's Take 5. Now Take 5 was from an album called Time Out which was released in 1959 and the reason it was called Time Out was because all of the songs in Time Out had interesting time signatures which is another way of saying that they had interesting rhythmic qualities about each of one of the tunes and Take 5 was actually written by Dave Brubeck's saxophonist whose name was Paul Desmond. He wrote this song and you can kind of tell because there's some saxophony things going on about this song. For me personally it's my favourite song ever because when I first started playing the saxophone I thought to myself if I could ever get to the dizzy height of being able to just play the melody, forget about the solo that Paul Desmond so beautifully plays, if I could ever just play the melody I would consider myself a saxophone player and I had no idea that I would end up playing this song thousands and thousands of times which is what happened in the end because I play this at weddings and the private functions that I play at as a professional saxophone player now and everybody loves it. I'd love to be able to share this with you. It's going to be a bit of a long video this or I might divide it up. I don't know because I don't know how long it's going to take but I want to teach you the entire melody and also Paul Desmond's amazing solo. I want to share all of that with you and write this down in letter names. I'm going to be using one of my session band apps and at the end of this video I'm going to show you how to set that up for yourself so that you can practice and play along with a backing track for this. It's absolutely fantastic. So there's three things that I can do to prepare myself to be able to, take, to play Take 5. And one of them, the most essential really, is to understand what 5-4 rhythm means. And 5-4 rhythm means that you've got five beats per bar. And I've been teaching this to people for a really long time. And the way that I get them to understand that is to first understand 4-4 four, four time. So 4-4 four, four is 1-2-3-4, 1-2-3-4, 1-2-3-4, 1-2-3-4. And for me this is kind of like a square. 1-2-3-4, 1-2-3-4. Most of the songs that you hear, most of the songs in popular music are going to be in 4-4. Four, four. So things like, well it's a wonderful night for a moon dance with the stars up above in the sky or somewhere over the rainbow way up high excuse my terrible singing but you get the idea so you've got one two three four one two and it's kind of even it's an even sort of sound when i hit on the one it's evenly spaced one two three four one two three four so most people get that and I hope that you do. If you don't, let me know and I'll explain it again. The other type of time signature that we need to be able to understand is 3-4 and that is 1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3. It's like a waltz. 3 ba da 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 two three one and for me this is like a circle it's like one two three one two three or a pendulum one two one two three one two three five four is like a hybrid between those two you've got half a bar of three four and half a bar of four four and it's this, it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now look, I know that I'm really emphasizing this, but it's essential that we get this because if you don't get this and you can't understand the 5-4 time signature, then it's going to be really hard to understand this song. And it's not even like 4-4 four, four or 3-4. Four. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
and take five actually starts on the four. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, ba ba do da ba da ba da ba do da ba ba do da two three ba ba do da. So it's essential that we understand five four and session band on their fantastic app, which is Jazz Volume Two, have got if you have a look at one of the genres on the left hand side you've got 5-4 and like I said if you have a look at the end of this video I'm gonna make a recording for you so that you can see exactly what I mean. So you select 5-4 and then go to demo number two which is take five and I'm just gonna highlight I'm gonna loop a particular bar so check out 5-4 rhythm here we go. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And that's really, really important that we're able to understand that. The second thing that we really need is a blue scale in the key of C for alto saxophone. And the notes are C, E flat, F, F sharp, G, B flat and C and you really need to have a high level of familiarity with the C blue scale. So if I play that in two octaves it will sound like this. <laughs> And what I really need to do is to play a blues scale in C about 450,000 times up and down in two octaves. And if you do that, if your fingers are really comfortable moving around in C blue scale, then that's going to make this song not slightly easier. It's going to make it phenomenally easier. So the third thing that we can do to prepare ourselves and make sure that we can play take five is to listen to the lyrics that was sung by Carmen McRae. Because this is really gonna help us phrase the song. And the lyrics are, won't you stop and take a little time out with me. So let's look at the first phrase of take five. And what I need to do is I need to sing that on my saxophone. Won't you stop and take a little time. Won't you stop and take a little time. And that will sound like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Session Bands app and I'm going to slow Take 5 down to 80 beats per minute, which is the slowest it will go on this app. And once I've got comfortable with playing those notes, I'm going to put it to my backing track. And remember, it starts on the 4, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three. Once I've got comfortable with being able to play that first phrase, then I can have a look at the next phrase, which is the part that goes just take five. And in the original, Dave Brubeck uses some chromatic connections and also some other embellishments around these notes. And I've simplified this to give us access to be able to play it. And what I suggest is that we put those decorative parts in afterwards, once we've got the hang of the tune. Otherwise, you're gonna spend a lot of time trying to get these chromatic runs and decorative parts, and it's gonna stop you from being able to play the tune. So I think just take those out, make it a bit more straightforward and accessible. Once you've got the hang of it, you can always add those at a later stage. So let's look at the next part of the song. <laughs>
And then if I put that to my backing track, one, two, three. And I need to repeat that over and over and over until I'm very comfortable with it. Then the second part repeats exactly the same notes, but the last two phrases are swapped around. So instead of going and then, it just swaps those two phrases around and does this first and then second. So if I now put the whole of the A section together, I'm going to get this. One, two, three. And that is the whole of the A section. So let's have a look at the B section. And the B section, the way that I think about it, is to break it up and divide it into two sets of phrases that kind of complement each other. And all of these notes are using the top end of your alto saxophone. So you do need to know where the high notes are and you specifically need to know where palm key E flat is. So you're using the palm keys with the octave key on. If you're not 100% sure where the high notes on the saxophone are, I've put a link in the description below of a video that I made that tells you where all of the high notes are. So make sure that you're comfortable with high E flat and high D using the palm keys. So the first phrase is C, E flat, C, G sharp, and sounds like this. Then the phrase after that is nearly chromatic. You've got F, G, G sharp, A, and that sounds like this. If we put those two together, you get this. Then the next phrase is B flat, D with the palm key, B flat and G, and that would sound like this. Then you have another nearly chromatic run, so you've got E flat, F, F sharp, G, sounds like this. So if we put those two together, that would sound like this. Then the next phrase is G sharp, C, G sharp, F, and that would sound like this. Then we have a lovely long phrase, which is this. Then we have what I think is a little bit of connective tissue, which is B flat A, B flat B. And then it repeats the phrases that we learned previously, which is C, E flat, C, G sharp. And then the same phrase, F, G, G sharp, A. And then B flat, D, B flat, G. E flat, F, F sharp, G. And then G sharp, C, G sharp, F. And then the final phrase, D, F, B flat, G sharp, G.
So if I put all of that together, that would sound like this. And if I was to do that with the backing track, I would have to scroll down to bar 13 and start from there. And now I have the A section and the B section down, which is fantastic. And if I put those two together, it would sound like this. Four bars intro. And that is all of the A section and all of the B section for you. So now we've got the A section and the B section of the melody down. Let's have a look at Dave Brubeck's incredible solo. And the thing about this solo is it's actually quite straightforward. And yet it's so beautiful and, and just perfect. So there's quite a few phrases here. Of course, I'm going to put the letter names down and I suggest that we learn it phrase by phrase. So let's have a look at the first phrase. First phrase is this. And what I suggest you do is to repeat each one of these phrases loads and loads of times and then add it to the next phrase and repeat the two phrases, then get the third phrase and add it and just keep adding to it like that. So that was the first phrase. Let's have a look at the second phrase. And the third phrase is And the fourth phrase complements the third phrase. The next phrase kind of repeats what was said before. And then there's another answer to that. Then you've got this beautiful, lovely phrase that starts on an F. Uh, 
And the next phrase complements that. Then you've got some phrases which are building up to a lovely crescendo. The next phrase is kind of the same shape, but further up the scale. And here's the next phrase. Then you've got this beautiful phrase which he just develops and plays with right towards right to the very end. Sounds like this. And that is the entire solo. And what's really cool is that all of that will fit over just one chord. And on the Session Band app, if I loop bars five and six, then I can play the entire solo or any one of the phrases over that. So I'm gonna loop it. So if you're not 100% sure about this, have a look at the end of the video where I add the instructions on how to loop this. So I can practice any one of these phrases, but I'm going to do the entire solo, so have a listen. And what I'd strongly suggest that you do is to learn this solo in its entirety. I'm going to be putting some worksheets at the end of the video. Learn it by heart and just play it over and over and over and over and over again until you get it. You can buy backing tracks for this. You could have a look at karaoke version. If you type into Google karaoke version backing tracks, there are backing tracks that will fit for this. You can also use the Session Band app, which is absolutely fantastic and I thoroughly recommend it. I really hope that that's been useful for you. And if you've got any questions about this, then please do come forward and let me know. You can either contact me by putting comments in the comments below or you can I'm very easy to find if you've got any questions. I also want to thank so many people that have given positive encouragement for these videos. I, I can't tell you what a fantastic impact that has in making these videos because I'm quite new to doing this and if you found this song useful then let me know of other songs that you'd like to learn and I'll definitely look into my repertoire and see if I can share those melodies with you too. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to support 
the making of these videos by buying us a coffee. That's always f absolutely fantastic and you'd be really surprised at the impact that your support has to me and my family. So I'm really, really grateful to you. I hope you found that useful and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much for coming by. My name's Lyndon. See you soon. Take care. Bye. So here's how to use the fabulous uh, resource which is a Session Band uh, for Take 5. So if you download and go to Session Band Jazz 2 and open that up and then if you touch on the top right hand corner and have a look down the left panel you'll see lots of extremely cool genres and the genre that we're interested in clearly for take 5 is 5-4 five, so you can select 5-4, highlight it in red have a look down here and you'll see that demo number 2 is take 5 and this just sounds absolutely fabulous what I do want to do is just go to this pencil here and make sure that I'm in uh, e flat and if I keep touching that it will toggle round to concert pitch and B flat for tenor players get out of there then I do want to go into here and make sure that the alto and the metronome is muted off and I can go back there to come back to the track and then have a listen to this it almost sounds like the original it's absolutely fabulous it's because it's real instruments really high quality Is where it would start. Terrible singing. Here comes the middle section. So as you can see, really, really, really useful for me to, to practice with. Um, absolutely excellent. But here's the way that I've been using it for my video. So what you can do to practice the first section, if you go down to where it says piano and touch in the top left hand corner on, bar, on the start of bar number five and the top left hand the top right hand corner sorry of bar number six can you see these gray arrows and now that is going to empower me to um, give me a, a looped bar so if i go back to the beginning and press play now it will loop ah that is like beyond useful and then what i can do is go down to the tempo and slow that right down now this will do two things it will for all of the A section, all of the A section is in the same chord, so I can practice. Absolutely so useful. Count myself in, so look, here it comes. One, two, three. Won't you stop and take a little time? And I can just practice that, and then I can get the next phrase together and do the same thing. So one, two, three. Won't you stop and take a little time out with me? And I can build it up from there. So I can build up the phrases because all of the phrases of the A section don't move out of this chord. So I can do the entire A section, but it doesn't end there because all of Paul Desmond's amazing solo all stays on this chord. So the solo, I can practice again the individual phrases. So I can just practice going ba do di ba dum, and I can just do that over and over and over again. When I feel a bit more comfortable, I can add the next phrase like this, like ba do di ba dum. Now I could just practice those two phrases back to back if I want to. Whenever I feel a bit more comfortable, all I need to do is just to increase the tempo. But don't increase the tempo until you've got the accuracy. Then I can take those triangles out of there and then that will run from the beginning again and I can practice the whole tune. It's just beyond useful. It's just fantastic for this. And I thoroughly recommend that you get it. I hope that's useful to you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.